got her all warmed up. She's ready to go. So good morning everybody. Filming this on Tuesday. I'm sure you're watching this on Wednesday or another day after today. Welcome. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We make new videos almost every day. Let's be honest, we miss one here or there, but hey, I'm only human. I'm not a super trucker. Just a normal trucker. Not too sure what the day holds for us today yet, but I've got the old girl warmed up. I'm gonna drag her out of her sleeping spot here. Go around to the front. I've already checked in. Just waiting for a trailer to hook up to. I'll go do some trucking. filling it up and then as soon as it packs down it uh, <laughs> turns into a rut again. I don't know what was there. But... Come on Roger. Oh man. Today is going to be a good day. It's supposed to rain a little bit so that part may not be as good depending on what we're doing during that time but yeah, it's going to be a good day. Hooking up to 409 DT here. It's a tri axle, 53 foot step. I don't hear any air leaks coming from right there. That's good. Lights are all working. Lights are all working. Let's make sure that there's air in the bags here. Where are you? Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Yeah, it's on ride. Okay. I'm just gonna wait for them to fill up. So here's what we're loading. Our first overdimensional load in a while. Gonna need to flag it and tag it. It's a little bit wide. We're just taking it back to the yard. It's wooden, uh, wooden structure thingers. These are all going to Grand Forks. Somebody's building something, and they need this specific stuff. Yeah, they put it all together here in Winnipeg, and then we ship it down to Grand Forks, North Dakota. It's 
pretty easy to tie down. It's if you throw a few straps over there, tighten it up, flag it. Got to put an oversized load sign at the back and at the front. Uh, beacons are not required in Manitoba. I always use them anyways because if I'm hauling an overdimensional or OD load, I like to draw attention to myself if possible so that people know something bigger than usual is coming. But you got to be careful with that in some places, especially places like Ontario. If you're not, if you, if you got a wide load, but you're not wide enough, they don't want you to use your beacons. But if you have a wide load that is wide enough, they definitely want you to use your beacons and they'll give you a ticket if you have your beacons on and you're not wide enough. Or if you don't have them on and you're too wide. But you gotta know when to turn on the beacons. It's confusing, right? In my mind, if you're over dimension at all, if anything at all hangs over the trailer like this, you should have your beacons on. That's my opinion, but I'm not DOT. I'm not the one that makes these rules. So make sure you research your local regulations in the province or state that you're operating in just to make sure that you know what'll get you into trouble and what won't. Because in places like Ontario, I mean, they'll find any excuse to give you a ticket. I mean, any excuse at all. I mean, you do a good job they'll let you go but you don't do a good job obviously they'll give you a ticket but if if you do too good of a job they'll also give you a ticket <laughs> so just make sure you uh, I'm just joking around here but make sure you research the local regulations of the wherever you're operating in and uh, this load is going to need a permit to go into North Dakota obviously and that permit will tell the driver that's taking it down there exactly which routes he's supposed to take and possibly at what time because in North Dakota I don't think you're allowed hauling over dimensional at night I think a half hour after and a half hour before sunrise just not at night but you'll have to research that yourself again don't just trust me and rely on me for all your information okay I'm an I'm an entertainment channel okay for the most part <laughs> I don't know all the different regulations in every single state and every single province off the top of my head. If I were to be taking this load down to North Dakota, the first thing I would do is I would pull up the regulations, DOT regulations for North Dakota and refresh my memory just so that it's at the front of my mind. those
Let's pull this thing out of here. And the goal is don't hit anything. That's right. You've been paying attention. Come with me, big piles of wood. We're going to take you to North Dakota. I'm not, but I'll take you to the person who is. Because I don't think they're sending me down there. It would be kind of a nice day trip to go there and back. Grand Forks is about three hours from, from us. mobile truck wash here today nice everybody's getting a bath today wonder if they'll wash my truck if i get in line i've got to go bring a trailer into winnipeg right now so maybe if i get back fast enough he's going down the line over here he started on this end over here with that western star he's going down that way he came today on a tuesday when there's not very many trucks in the yard i guess they wouldn't come on a weekend that would make that wouldn't make sense. Probably Monday to Friday gig type thing. Hey, he's over there washing all the trucks. That's what I mean. They they would love to have a, a wash bay right here on site. A wash bay costs quite a bit of money. And uh, I can understand why it's been put off this long. But it, it would be nice. I agree with you guys in the comment section. I see you guys asking if we have a wash bay. We don't yet. 
but it's it's in the plans obviously uh right now they got a guy who comes here in a mobile truck washes all the trucks i don't know how often he comes but he's here today but you know this place keeps growing and growing i've been very impressed they've been managing it very well uh it's more than tripled in size by the time but since i've been here so i'm guessing you know in the future eventually there'll be a wash bay right on site here that we can just roll the truck into and shine her up but that's in the future i like to have a clean truck i do it's just hard to keep it that way because of the climate we live in. You can see all of our trailers too. They could all use a regular wash, but it's not like down in the U.S. where all the highways are nice and clean all the time. And, you know, it's easier to keep a truck clean down there. Up here, the climate we live in, it's not that people don't want to take care of their vehicles. It's not that they don't want to keep clean vehicles. It's that it's physically impossible. Now you spend $70 on a truck and trailer wash or $100 on a truck and trailer wash. Literally 15 minutes later, it's just as dirty again. It's just the season we're in right now. It's not like that all year round here, but you know, for at least half the year, six months of the year, it's just the way the world is here. It's the climate, all the snow and you know, the salt on the roads because of the snow and it's tough, it's tough, but a wash bay on site would help definitely, definitely. But you know, we'll take what we can get for now. We've got a mobile wash guy over there. And I better go bring my trailer into Winnipeg so I can get back in time to get in line before he leaves. Yeah, that's sort of why I want to bring my own pressure washer. Just a small one, you know, just to rinse the dust off at the end of my day or something. I need one anyways. I need one to uh, clean my own vehicles at home and you know, clean the deck, clean the, the driveway, the house, everything. Pressure washers come in very handy and I've been meaning to buy one for a long time. I'm just gonna get one that's somewhat portable enough that I can take it with me and just you know, give my truck a little wash in the back here somewhere when it needs it. That way I can do it whenever I want to, right? And the best part of that is I gotta take the pressure washer home with me after. <laughs> One sec, I gotta go get my broom. I left it in my pickup. I'm gonna have to sweep out this trailer apparently. You know, they're still looking for drivers. I never, there, there isn't a permanent driver for this truck yet, for a city driver. And uh, they have some empty trucks here. I know they're looking for owner operators. If you guys want to apply, they're definitely looking for new drivers. 100% uh, looking for more owner operators. Uh, I haven't talked to them this week yet to see what this week's uh, numbers are like and what they're looking for this week. But, you know, I'll give them a call anyways and mention me when you apply. And I took my broom home so I could sweep my driveway. And then I didn't sweep my driveway, I bought an air conditioner instead. It took a little while because uh, the guy, his name was Colin uh, from Brown's Plumbing and Heating. He was, he was a very nice salesman, very good guy. He came down and he explained all the options that we had. He measured out our house and told us what kind of air conditioner we would need for what, you know, the temperatures we wanted to keep in the house. And I think we got a really good deal. So we got a, a really nice one actually. It wasn't the cheapest one, but it's gonna do the job. And it took, took a little while to get that all figured out. It took most of the evening, so I didn't get to sweep my driveway yesterday. I'll have to try and remember to bring this home again tomorrow. So now its services are needed here. Over here. Around here. take my broom it's my favorite broom I'll know it was you if you did it got cameras everywhere <laughs> it was it was an expensive broom it really is that's why I kind of want to take it home every night because it wasn't cheap and it's mine I paid for it I'm keeping it for me
flatbeds in the morning and dry vans in the afternoon. We do it all. I would just like to take a little time out here and acknowledge whoever dropped trailer 5062B, the one I just hooked up to, thank you for cleaning this trailer out before you left it here so that I didn't have to spend my time cleaning up the mess in there. I really appreciate that. I've been seeing a lot of trailers that have been left here dirty. Uh, they have asked us to clean out the trailers before we leave them here. And I never like to call people out when, you know, they, they cut some corners. But every now and then it gets a little frustrating when every trailer you open is dirty. I just want to specially acknowledge, I wish I knew exactly who it was because I would say your name right here to the world. I opened the doors of this trailer, dropped here in our empty yard, and you could practically eat off the floor. It was perfect, mint, clean. Good job. That's the way it's supposed to be done. Really appreciate that. Things have been moving fast today. You're going to have to keep up. We dropped off that van trailer, and now we've hooked up to a roll-tight Conestoga. Conestoga, right? Covered wagon. And I've got to deliver what's in it. And we're already here, so we better start rolling up the, rolling up the sides so that they can get it off. All right? Got to try and keep up. Oh! And it's snowing. What a day. Why is it snowing? Ugh. It's supposed to be done with this stuff. It's going to get my truck all dirty again. Not that it matters, but, you know, I'm doing the best I can here. All right, yeah, so here's our covered wagon. I think I'm just going to call it that, because that's easier than saying Conestoga. There we go. They didn't want to open for me. Because I made the mistake of parking facing away from the wind. So the wind wants to push those curtains back towards the truck right now. They didn't want to open. Now I understand why they say be careful in the wind, right? I got it locked there right now. But as soon as we're done unloading this, I'll roll it back up. Hopefully the wind won't bother me when I'm doing that. I'm thinking it should help me. That is frosty. I thought we were done with this frosty business. I don't think it's snowing anymore, but it's... No, it's still snowing. It's... You can't see it, but it's, it's there. Trust me. It's there. So they got this big, uh, big loader over here that's unloading me. The loader is unloading me. So technically, I guess it would be an unloader. It's actually supposed to be kind of cold all week. And it's supposed to go down to minus seven tonight. And let's see what the weather's gonna be like tomorrow. Maybe the forecast has changed. You know, it changes all the time. All the time. No, minus seven tonight. Plus three tomorrow, plus nine. <laughs> it's going below zero into freezing all the rest of this week. Fantastic, yes. Oh, and uh, have your fill of my hair, or lack of it, for the rest of this week. Because this is the last week I will have hair. I am shaving my head on this next coming weekend. Bald, like right down to the scalp bald i have to do it now because i'm already starting to tan and i'm already going to have tan lines it's going to look ridiculous for the first little while but that's okay throughout the summer it'll even out and this is my first time in my life that i'm going to be completely bald and if i like it that's how i'm going to stay from now on all right so get a good look at the hair You ready to see bald trucker Josh? What is it, Tuesday today when I'm filming this? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I guess I'll have to do it on Saturday. 
sometime this weekend anyways, it's all coming off, all of it. <sighs> kind of excited about it. It's mostly because my hair is thinning so much up here and I don't want to have that big bowling alley. So instead of a bowling alley, I'm just gonna go right bald and you won't even know. I can't be balding if I'm already bald. It's my logic. So pretty much I am going to own this head of non-hair. I'm gonna own this balding head if I'm losing my hair anyways, you know what? I'm just gonna cut it all off. That way I win, because I go bald on my terms. That is a massive unloader. And yes, I would love to drive it. No, I have never delivered one like that yet. Maybe one day. Very windy. I'm hoping this wind is going to uh, help me close this and not work against me. I think I'm going to be done when I get back. It's 4.45 right now. I'm gonna stay hooked up to this trailer overnight. I gotta pull it up to Arburg in the morning, so no point in detaching now. I'm just gonna have to reattach it in the morning now. I'm just gonna see if there's room to park it in the back here so I don't have to walk so far to get to my pickup. <laughs> I guess I missed the mobile wash guy. He's gone already. We got all these, uh, what do you call those, underbelly things here. I think they had them all stacked up nice and they got blown over in the wind and haven't had a chance to fix that yet. I know, I know, I see it too. Not enough time in the day, that's the biggest problem. There's not enough time in the day. So you know how I like to drive really close to the camera and some of you have been worried that I would drive over it one day? Well, look what happened today. <laughs> I put it on the ledge of the trailer to film myself parking the trailer at the end of the day and I guess I was so tired I didn't notice that the wind blew it off. And it blew it right into the tracks where I was driving and I drove over it with the trailer. It was an empty trailer, but it still did this. And it's shot, it won't. Start and now it's gone to that big electronic shop in the sky. GoPro heaven. GoPro heaven. <laughs> it's dead. It won't even start, but it served its purpose. It's uh, worked for me for the last uh, at least two years every day. So uh, it's paid for itself more than more than paid for itself. So it's... we have this spare. Thank goodness. Exact same camera as this. It's a GoPro Hero 7 Black Edition. Just be really careful with this one. I guess this means I drove you over. I drove over my viewers. Rude. All of them. Well, at least you're treating them equally. I am so sorry. A lot of good times, eh, Weasel, with that camera? Not good times. I told you to be careful. Yeah, well, that's no fun. Chevy? Yeah. And we got uh, salad. And. What I thought was a chicken pot pie, but is apparently a gratin, whatever that is. Bring the great taste of Swiss chalet home. Cheese lovers can't get enough of this Gratin's creamy cheddar sauce. Exceptionally blah blah blah, it's gonna be delicious. What am I doing, an ad? This isn't an ad. It does smell good. It looks exactly like a chicken pot pie still. Yeah, it just doesn't have the top crust. Hmm. I don't know, I like cheese. I like cheese too. I especially like cutting the cheese. You're very good at it.